learners as a teacher or as a trainee teacher when you enter in your class you not only need to manage your teaching learning you need to manage your learners you need to manage the interaction which takes place between you and your learners you need to manage the activities the methods the material which you use so it means then when we talk about classroom management it is not only the management of discipline or management of students but it includes a lot of things so in today's discussion i am going to talk about the basic concepts related to classroom management specifically its meaning and principles so let us start with what is classroom management you know some people call classroom management as a process in which many steps are involved which follow a particular methodology but for me classroom management is more as an approach it is the teacher who basically manages the class it is the teacher who decides how to manage the class what to manage in the class why classroom management is required so for me the approach of teacher is more important though it is also follows a process so when we talk about classroom management we not only talk about classroom management as a process as well as as an approach but also we talk about various provisions and procedures which are necessary to establish and maintain an environment in a classroom in which instruction and learning can occur so what is required in classroom management to maintain a conducive teaching learning environment and whatever a teacher manages he or she manages to create that environment to sustain that environment in classroom management when some people talk about classroom management they also say that management of a classroom is an act for better skills it is an art of the judicious use of various means to achieve pre decided objectives so i hope that these uh, with these three uh, concepts you are able to understand what classroom management is now the question is what we actually manage in classroom as a teacher when we manage our classroom first we create a good conducive teaching learning environment where learners are free to ask questions where learners are free to share their ideas where learners are free to dialogue with each other to discuss with each other to ask questions to the teachers so creating is the first step in classroom management then comes maintenance of learners involvement in a good classroom if learners are not involved in teaching learning it is only the teacher who controls and directs the teaching learning who decides what to be presented how to be presented where to be presented when to be presented and learners have no role then teaching learning doesn't take place in that classroom so maintaining learners involvement is again an important aspect of classroom management maintaining learners involvement is again an important aspect of classroom management then comes the ensuring what you need to ensure you need to ensure that what are your desired learning outcomes which are to be achieved through the teaching learning in a particular class so when you talk about classroom management you need to ensure that what type of learning outcomes you have decided and are you working in proper direction to achieve those learning outcomes then comes establishing effective discipline when i'm talking about effective discipline i'm not talking about a discipline in an autocratic environment in an autocratic environment teachers control everything learners are not ready learners are not free to share what they wish to share only they are allowed to respond when a teacher asks questions so such kind of environment is not a good discipline in the classroom so when we talk about good classroom management we talk about a positive discipline where learners themselves decide that what they need to do and what they do not need to do 
the next aspect of classroom management is helping helping means helping the learners to acquire maximum knowledge to develop their attitude and to acquire skills so if a teacher is helping the learners to maximize knowledge to acquire certain skills to develop a positive attitude towards teaching learning towards the concept towards the issues which have been discussed then a teacher is a good classroom manager now for becoming a good classroom manager what you need to do you need to understand learners needs when i'm talking about understanding the learners needs every learner attends a class with certain expectations in the mind no learner is coming to your class without any expectation are you able to mark those expectations are you able to ask your students to share their expectations only then you can understand what learners needs are if the expectations are not taken care by you as a teacher he or she consciously or unconsciously become inattentive and hence either they disturb the class or sometimes they misbehave with the peers as well as with the teachers so to knowing the expectation of the learners is very important for classroom management dear teachers you should know that you should cater the learners need not only the academic needs but also the personal needs a learner in your class is not with you only to fulfill his or her academic needs he may get content from anywhere but how you are developing the skills the values how you are solving his or her problems academic as well as personal that reflects how effectively you are managing the class sometimes students become anxious so to maintain and to control their anxiety level a teacher need to do a lot you need to discuss with them what are the reasons for their anxiety you need to provide them some solutions some opportunities so that they participate in the activities they share their views and their anxiety level can be maintained so either by sharing the learner expectations giving them opportunity to solving their personal as well as academic problems and to maintain their anxiety level you basically try to understand and accomplish the learners need in your class next comes the principles of classroom management many researchers many theorists many educationists have talked about what good classroom management is and they have proposed many principles of classroom management like principle of clarity and mastery over content principle of involvement principle of democratic behavior principle of teachers behavior principle of self control principle of flexibility and principle of personal attributes let us talk about all these principles one by one when we talk about the principle of clarity or mastery over content this basically reflects that a teacher should have a thorough knowledge or the mastery on one subject if a teacher has the thorough knowledge or the mastery in one subject he teaches or she teaches effectively in the classroom because if you do not know your content properly sometimes you hesitate sometimes you fumble sometimes you put some pause sometimes you give some statements which are disjointed to avoid that the thorough knowledge of the content and mastery over content is required this principle also talks about that learners are greatly influenced by a well read knowledgeable and learned teacher because learners are very quick to know that whatever you are telling is very superficial or you have the depth knowledge of that content if you have depth knowledge of that content your attitude your firmness your control over the content and your accuracy and fluency of delivery of the content reflects that how well you know about your content the thorough knowledge can help you in properly conceptualizing the content which is to be covered in your lesson and the process of conceptualization helps you arrange instructional tasks 
in most appropriate order according to the needs and mental abilities of your learners. So this is principle of clarity and mastery over content. The next is principle of involvement. In a classroom, as a good classroom manager, a teacher makes teaching learning process more participatory. When I'm talking about more participatory, I'm talking about involvement of learners in each and every step of teaching learning. Because active involvement of learners in instructional tasks is a precondition for learning. If they are not actively engaged, they will not learn. Actively engaged learners not only achieve mastery learning, but also create minimum problems to the teachers. So if you involve your students in different activities, in different uh, teaching learning processes, through different type of tasks which you can create while you are delivering your content, while you are giving them some opportunity, while you are facilitating them to construct their knowledge, more involvement, less disturbance and less problems for the teachers. Then comes the principle of democratic behavior. When I'm talking about principle of democratic behavior, we are basically talking about that a teacher should provide equal opportunity to every learner to participate in teaching learning activity. If you provide equal opportunity to every learner, it will develop a healthy positive attitude among the learners for learning. The learners learn how to find a solution in classroom through understanding of each other's views. So if there is a democratic environment and you are promoting democratic behavior, they will learn how to listen others' views, how to acknowledge others' ideas, how to construct your meaning or your ideas by using others' ideas. It also allows learners to take initiative about the instructional process and this ensures effective use of classroom timing. Then comes the principle of teacher's behavior. How do you, you behave with your learners? Your behavior should display positive attributes, confidence, determination, willpower, etc. A teacher should be conscious that his or her behavior in the classroom is being minutely observed by the learners. Positive att attributes in the teacher's behavior basically help to develop a desirable behavior in a learner as well. And the behavior should not directly or indirectly have any negative impact on learners. This you should keep in your mind when you are dealing with your learners in the classroom. Then comes the principle of self-control. When I'm talking about the principle of self-control, I'm basically talking about that you have to be firm and consistent in your classroom behavior. A teacher with a strong commitment and conviction and deep commitment to the task will be able to manage the classroom and instruction effectively. A teacher should have self-control to his or her behavior as it will encourage the learners to develop self-control in them also. As a teacher, you should lead learners towards the growth and development of internal controls, self-discipline, positive attitude, and work through various learning activities in the classroom. So if you follow the principle of self-control, you will facilitate your learners. Then comes the principle of flexibility. Flexibility is the key in effective teaching learning. If you are very firm, if you are very structured, you want to present the content in a very sequential manner, there is no liberty to the learners, then learning will not take place effectively. So the principle of flexibility is not opposed the principle of self-control. Rather, it facilitates. You should display the flexibility in your behavior and to accommodate learners' ideas, their plans, their observation when you are teaching. Sometimes you teach some concept. You have some ideas in your mind. You have certain examples in your mind which you have prepared for your lesson. But your learners are coming with different examples with different ideas, which are basically encouraging and enriching your teaching learning. So learners ideas should be used to enrich your teaching learning. They should not be opposed. They should not be asked not to share their ideas. Depending upon the requirements of the prevailing situations, 
teachers should be able to make necessary changes in his or her behavior as well as in teaching learning activities if the teacher is following the principle of flexibility but if there is no flexibility so whatever teacher has planned he or she will deliver the same whether it is being accepted and receptive for the learners or not then comes or not this will also help him or her to evolve with alternative strategies and use them to achieve the curricular objectives by giving due importance to the ideas and observation of the learners you too can make your teaching more learner oriented and hence more productive too then comes the principle of personal attributes when i'm talking about personal attributes there are many personal attributes of the teachers like warmth empathy sympathy which have very strong bearing on learners behavior the teachers care taking behavior harmony respect to one another show the dignity of work bring peace and self discipline it indirectly controls the undesirable behavior of your learners so you should follow this a teacher plays an important role in determining the kinds of psychosocial climates that prevails in the classroom the behavior of the learners can be modified and controlled in every consistent way through leadership displayed by the teacher so as a teacher you need to display the leadership what is expected from you if you analyze all these principles of classroom management you will be able to know you will be able to draw certain conclusions that as a teacher it is expected from you that you accept the feelings of the learners to be sympathetic to their problems both academic as well as personal you need to try to be a good friend of your learners you interact with the learners on a level which is satisfying to both the parties means your learners and you and help them in achieving their objectives as a teacher your personal attributes influences the feelings the interests the values attitude moods temperament of your learners actually the learners should not perceive the teacher as an unsympathetic adult rather they try to find a person with whom they can share their ideas their problems and he or she will listen them sympathetically learners respond and perform well when teacher is supportive and helpful throughout the sequence of learning experiences the learners motivation is often positively affected by the teacher's sincere enthusiasm so a teacher should be able to carefully assess the learning atmosphere in the classroom and modify his or her teaching accordingly so with this you can say that in a class when you are working as a classroom manager and we are talking about classroom management there are various dimensions of classroom management you need to manage your behavior you need to manage your learners behavior you need to manage the resources available you need to manage the methodology which you are using you need to manage the whole classroom environment so actually the role of a teacher as a classroom manager is to manage the classroom environment effectively and to provide to your learners a conducive learning environment i hope that this discussion will help you in understanding the concept of classroom management in a better way thank you very much and keep learning